Hello, everybody, and just wanted to record this video on TikTok cheat codes for financial advisors. So I've gone over TikTok before. I had just made a video about why um, TikTok is going to be extremely important for financial advisors in the first place. I wanted to take this video and kind of break down a little bit more of the strategy that actually goes into being on the platform, some of the benefits that uh, financial advisors can get from being on TikTok in the first place. And yeah, let's just roll right into that. So first off, you know, before we get into, you know, all the cheat codes for TikTok, let's explain why it's a little bit difficult to get started on TikTok, or at least there's a perception among a lot of financial advisors that it's very difficult to get on TikTok. And that's completely understandable because it's a totally different platform from traditional social media. So let's kind of just go back and look at social media over time and what social media looked like to begin with. Now, at the very, very you know dawn of the internet, we had email, which was text-based. Now you can add files, but I would make the argument that email was actually the birth of social media as, I mean, you were sharing media back and forth between people directly. The media was text. It's not what we think of as media today since we have videos and images and all this other stuff. But there was a media and you were using it socially. You were sharing it. So social media, I would argue that email um, is and was social media, just far different from what we know today. It was the very first. It was a direct peer-to-peer uh, text-based social media, very basic, very simple, but it was extremely effective, you know, um, beyond just a work setting or a professional or business setting, you know, it uh, eliminated the need for a lot of people to need to mail letters halfway across the world. They could send, you know, their grandma an email instantly, you know, from China to Mexico, right? So, yeah, I would I would argue that email would be the birth of social media, whereas Facebook would be the advent of social media. Now, Facebook, when it started out, certainly wasn't for business owners. It was a mostly text based social media and uh, they added pictures and images and, and other media as well, more as a feature later on. Now, the difference between Facebook and email would be that Facebook was more of a network of text, whereas email was very direct. I send a message to you. Facebook was, I send a message to the world, and then the world can comment on that message as well. Now, you know, Facebook is a lot more uh, media oriented around things like uh, videos and images, but in the origins of the app, not so much. And then moving on, we had Instagram. Instagram was mostly media based and text was just a feature of Instagram. So we went from, you know, peer to peer text to peer to network text to peer to network images, right? And text was just a feature used to describe the images, be it of, you know, your cat or your supper or whatever. We all remember those early Instagram days. Of course, the cat videos that, uh, <laughs> kind of came along with that as well. I would say the difference between Facebook and Instagram was it's kind of inverted where Facebook was me emphasis on media with, or sorry, emphasis on text with media as an additional feature, whereas Instagram was emphasis on media with a text feature. And then YouTube came along. Uh, YouTube, you know, was a video, well, it still is a video hosting platform. You know, you can host long form videos. It's very structured. There's room for lots of texts and links and things like that in the description. The other big thing about YouTube as well is there's a very clear creator to consumer dynamic. Whereas on Facebook, you know, the network is, a, there's a lot more people that kind of post and, and do whatever on it. Whereas YouTube, it's, it's very, very kind of clearly defined who's a creator and who's a consumer. So, what is TikTok? And this is where it gets a little complicated because TikTok is kind of a combination of everything that I just described, right? It's email because you can send, you know, DMs back and forth. Um, it's not email because of every single other feature that TikTok has that is not text-based. Um, it's like YouTube because there are videos and that's the only media that you can really share on the platform. 
uh, and you can use text to describe the same way as you can do on a YouTube video. It's not like YouTube because the content length prohibits long rants. You need to be highly structured and every second counts, right? On YouTube, I could make a video on why you should have a Roth IRA. Sorry, oh my. You get what I'm saying. Have a video about Roths up and then you know, go into every single little detail and, and make an hour long presentation on this for YouTube. And it could be beautiful and, and long and elegant. Whereas on TikTok, you get kind of three minutes maximum and 30 seconds of effective time to really kind of break down the main points of why you should do it. So you have to add a lot more value in a lot shorter amount of time. It's like Facebook and Instagram, because the scroll features are very similar. And it's now media based, like both those platforms are. Uh, it's not like Facebook and Instagram because the way you engage with the content and the community is much different, right? People oftentimes will actually respond with videos to comments and stuff like that. There's also a clear creator and consumer role on TikTok as well. Um, kind of how it would be like YouTube that way. Uh, so it's really borrowed a lot of different aspects from be it YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and kind of taken them all and meshed it all together. So ultimately, what TikTok is at its core, it's a video based app that promotes creativity and consistency by putting forward the content people want to see and rewarding creators with massive amount of reach for finding what the market wants. So essentially, it's a value proposition. Uh, bargaining kind of app is more or less what it is, right? The people that are consumers want high quality content that entertains them that they can learn from and creators want massive amounts of reach. So in order to get that massive amount of reach, you have to give the market what it wants, which is that high quality, entertaining, engaging content. So is TikTok worth it for financial advisors? Now I went over this a lot more in my last video. Yes, 100% worth it for financial advisors. If you are not on TikTok, you need to be on TikTok 100%. It's extremely important that you get on the platform. But let's go through some common objections that I do get for, you know, why TikTok isn't necessarily a thing, right? So first off is it's meant for children and the audience is not on the platform. Um, so that's, that's something that a lot of financial advisors say. Completely not true. First off, I'll counter the, you know, thing that it's meant for children. Uh, well, who says children, you know, can't be the audience that you can market to, or at least younger people, maybe not children, but there's a lot of younger people, people my age who are very interested in wealth. I would say that's something that uh, is quite obvious by kind of looking at me and my age and how interested in finance and financial advising I am. Uh, I broke down in my last video, I was going through the comment sections of a whole bunch of videos on TikTok of different financial um, advisors who were on the platform. I was explaining exactly what they were doing, how they were monetizing TikTok the whole bit. And there were people in the comment section who were like children or teenagers or very, very young people who were making predictions about the financial market, who were discussing how important it was to, you know, have a good credit score, who were just really, really interested and engaged with the financial content that was in there. Go right now. If any of you actually have a TikTok account, hopefully you do. If you don't, I don't know what you're doing. If you have a TikTok account, literally go up right now and just look up hashtag finance and see how many millions and millions and millions of views there are. Go through some of the videos and see how many millions of views some of these videos are getting. The audience is on the platform. The audience does want to see your content and there are people on there who are making a killing right now on TikTok. So that kind of leads into the other one, no way to monetize TikTok. 100%, like I said, I broke that down in my other TikTok video. There were people in there monetizing through uh, different links to products that they were selling, uh, booking consultations and getting people on calls, so on and so forth. Plenty of different ways to monetize TikTok. Our clients are doing it every single day. The other one I get is that it's too late and that the market is too saturated, which I find completely laughable. Um, TikTok hasn't even fully developed its ads manager, guys, right? And that's some of what I explained in the last TikTok video as well is like, 
the fact that the ads manager isn't even developed, people are rushing to the game and there's not even an ads manager that's fully set up yet. And you're telling me on a platform where they don't even have all their backend infrastructure set up, it's too late. And what's so crazy to me is I know people who refuse to get on TikTok because they think it's too late. And even though it's early, they're refusing to get on because it's late. And they continue to watch more and more people have more and more success with TikTok because it is early. And then they end up joining or putting off joining later and later and later and later. And eventually it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of, you know, they do end up joining too late, right? So don't be one of those people who are stuck in the mud, stuck in those cycles of thinking. It is definitely not too late. Uh, the market is definitely not saturated. You know, um, you, you got plenty of time to still get on the platform and, and make a mark on uh, the platform as well. So here are some other objections I get. One, it takes too much time to be a content creator and all that other stuff. And I would 100% agree the way that most uh, financial advisors approach TikTok it does take way too much time. They end up spending way too much time making content, not enough time actually getting on the phone with clients and just fulfilling and doing what they need to do, right? Like, uh, you know, most financial advisors, they're that. They're financial advisors. They're not content creators. They, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys who are watching this, you didn't sign up to, you know, make TikToks all day. You've signed up to, you know, learn your role, do it well, ful fulfill the job that you were signed up for and i'm sure you know all of you do that very very well you don't do content creation not very well because that's not your job right so 100 percent, it does take a lot of time and it takes too much time away from the job the way that most people do it when they're posting you know five six seven eight videos a day on there it's also very confusing to have to learn to be a content creator as well there's so many different things you have to learn when it comes to TikTok, wrapping your head around you know how do I make the right hook? How do I do this, that, the other, blah, 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 blah. And I would agree on that too. It's such a headache to learn how to do it, how to become a content creator and all that other stuff. So how do we go about solving these problems, right? What if I told you, you guys that we have a system where you can get 95% of the benefits of being on the platform while only doing about 5% of the work, okay? About five minutes a week is what it takes in our system. You can also grow an audience on multiple platforms, Instagram and Facebook, while you're at it through leveraging their Reels feature as well. So explain why. It's our exclusive lead system. It's a hybrid system. So what we're doing is we're leveraging paid advertising on TikTok to achieve the desired result or add features that are not organic, such as lead generation to actually get an advantage on the competition, right? So this way, we're getting the same amount of reach as somebody who's posting, you know, let's say, let's say a guy's posting 10 videos a week. You should be posting a lot more than that to get organic reach if that's what you're wanting to do. But let's just say for easy numbers, he's posting 10 videos a week and, you know, he's getting 500 views on each video, right? So that comes out to about 5,000 views. Well, let's say we were to build one video right? One high quality video. And for a very small fee, pay TikTok to reach those 5,000 views. Well, we're doing 10 times less work and we're getting the same amount of views as the guy who's doing it organically. Plus, because we're also going through paid advertising, we also get premium features on our TikToks as well, such as lead forms where people can click on your video and sign up to become a lead, give you their name, phone number, and email, and you can hop on a call with them right away. So if somebody's super, super interested, not only are you getting the exact same reach as the other guy, building your audience, building your followers, doing it for 10 times less, all you have to do is pay TikTok a small fee, and you're also getting the names, emails, phone number, and whatever other information that you need out of people who are interested in your service and wanna hop on a call and become a client with you right away, right? Huge advantage. The other thing as well that we do, and, you know, be completely honest, you do need to be on TikTok a little bit, even if you're running ads, because when people, you know, who are on the platform, scroll through, see a video they like, oftentimes a very common reaction is click on the video. You'll see that the account only has one or two or three videos posted. You go, oh, this person isn't active, isn't engaged on TikTok. 
I'm not really interested and people move away from that. So what we recommend doing is posting high quality content, just one video once a week to stay relevant, build an audience, you know, kind of look at the, the comment section, see what people are asking for, be able to engage with that audience and continue to build your following on TikTok, as well as uh, use that organic outreach to push your paid advertising further in the TikTok algorithm. I'm not going to get into all the algorithm, you know, jargon and all of that stuff on, on how that works, but it does help a lot even when you're doing paid advertising to continue to post at least once a week. And then that way, when people go back to your profile, they see, uh, you know, the last time that you posted was maximum six days ago. So like, oh, he's active. You're way more likely to get followers. You're way more likely to get likes on your videos if you're getting more followers and so on and so on and so on. It just becomes a, a flywheel effect of getting better and better and better. Now you might say, okay, well, that's cool, but this still takes a lot of time even to make that one video a week. And this still doesn't solve the problem, John, of it being confusing to be a content creator. Well, you've got no excuses because guess what? In our exclusive lead system, we take care of all of the scripts for everything. And if some of you guys would even like free scripts as well, scripts, templates, ideas on how to get started, what videos are successful on TikTok, what we've seen blow up and go viral, I would be happy to provide you with some of those scripts. Just shoot me a DM or drop a comment saying that you'd like some of those scripts. Again, more than happy to get that out to you so you have no excuse to not be on the platform anymore because I'm offering those to you completely for free. I just wanna see people on the platform, right? All I ask in return is if your video blows up and it's successful, DM me, let me know, and I can attribute it to our system. Now, the other thing that we do as well is we take advantage of multiple platforms, right? So we also take advantage of Instagram and Facebook because all we have to do is take an extra 30 seconds out of our day. We've already made the TikTok and we can now post that to Instagram and Facebook and use their Reels feature that they've developed kind of in competition with TikTok as well and get triple the amount of organic outreach, continue to build a system or sorry, an audience out on there. On top of that, we can also take advantage of the performing videos that are doing well on multiple platforms. So let's say a, a video is doing very well on you know Facebook and TikTok, and we realize, wow, this video does very well organically on its own. We can put that and just use that as a paid ad and it will go super viral. So this can solve the problems of TikTok taking way too much time because you continue to get you can continue to get way, way, way more reach for a small fee by paying TikTok while getting the advantage of generating leads from the platform as well. And our exclusive lead system takes the confusion out of having to learn to be a content creator. We specialize in making life much, much easier for financial advisors, booking them an extra 20 to 30 qualified calls a month. If you are interested in that, please feel free to shoot me a DM and I'd be happy to jump on a call with you for that as well as send you over the scripts, templates, or ideas if you would like that as well. So if you're interested in our exclusive lead system, uh, again, be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, hopefully this was able to provide some value to you guys. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Bye-bye.